welcome back. Today I'll be working on the Xbox Series S. This one has a few missing pins in the HDMI port and it needs to be replaced. I'll also be showing you how to take this apart and we'll get an even closer look at the HDMI port thanks to this video's sponsor, Andonstar. We'll take a look at them later, but for now, let's start tearing this console down. Starting on the back, there are two torque screws hidden behind little stickers on either corner. Both of them need to be removed and set to the side. Now the bottom panel can be slid back and removed, revealing a familiar gathering of more torque screws. Like most other Xboxes, the green screws indicate long frame screws, the silver ones are component screws, and the black ones are heatsink screws. All seven of these green frame screws need to be loosened and removed in order to detach the top cover. Now the main body can be removed from the shell. There are three daughter boards along the frame that need to be removed. They all use the same black screws as the heat sink and can be kept together off to the side. The power button has its own dedicated daughter board. This is pretty cute. Now I'll remove all the component and heat sink screws. The top metal cowling has been loose this whole time. Nothing holds it in aside from some pressure, and it can be pulled off and set to the side. A small metal clip acts as a retainer over the front USB port. I'm not sure why this exists, or what it actually helps with, but here it is, and it's in the way. The components can now be pulled out. You'll notice the fan is far dirtier than it was a few seconds ago. That's because this video contains footage from three different Xboxes, but thanks to the magic of video editing, you might not have noticed unless I pointed it out. With the fan and power supply out of the way, I can pull the board up using the heatsink and front USB port for some leverage. Under the board, we find the classic X clamp. This design hasn't changed much since the first Xbox One, and is still as frustrating to remove sometimes. A pair of sturdy pliers and some upward leverage should unclamp the bracket. Now the heatsink can be freed from the board, revealing some nice crusty thermal paste below. Straight to the target, the HDMI port. I'll remove this little foam pad before my heat gun reduces it into a toxic smelling oblivion. Next, I'll fire up the heat gun at 450 degrees Celsius and move it back and forth over the port. This whole process took about 50 seconds in real time. These boards are very efficient at spreading heat. I'll use some soldering wick to soak up the old unleaded solder from the data pads. I'll then replace it with leaded solder, which has a lower melting temperature, though it's really up to you which kind you prefer. I'll also try fruitlessly to extract the solder from the feet. There are a couple more aggressive ways to do this, and I've shown them in other videos, but for the purpose of this video, I think I'll show you another method. I'll heat gun the board until the feet melt into a liquid state. The port is then forced into place and the heat quickly removed. Now would be a good time to show you what I received from our sponsor, Andonstar. You see, I use this fancy Amscope when soldering. It does have a camera attachment, but the video from it is absolute trash. The frame rate is like 12 frames per second. It's awful. I always have to jerry-rig the camera around so you can see what I'm working on, but not anymore. Thanks to Andonstar for sending over the AD208 microscope. This simple scope is USB powered, has a huge 8.5 inch LCD that displays in 1080p, it has a built-in ring light as well as two independent positionable LED bulbs, but the big feature that I'm interested in is the ability to record pictures and videos directly to a micro SD card. This microscope has a great zoom and allows me to clearly show you how I solder on tiny boards. I'll add some flux over the top of the data pins from this port. Now using a bent nose soldering iron, I'll press each pin into place over the data pad that already has solder on it. I'll use tweezers to apply a bit of pressure on the pin while it solidifies. Sometimes they can have a tendency to spring upward and disconnect. Using a toothbrush and some alcohol, I'll clean off the back of the port. Using those same tweezers, I'll poke and prod each pin to verify that this isn't going to break off of general use. Now I'll feed some solder into the bottom of the port through the holes for the feet. Even if there was already some solder here, it's best to remelt it so that you can fully envelop the feet and make a strong bond. I will say my only complaint about this microscope is getting used to it. Without binocular vision, it can be a little tricky to get your hands in the right place. Other than that, this is a fantastic tool and a great addition to my shop. You can grab one for yourself using my link in the description below. Now it's time for some speedy reassembly. Overall, I really enjoyed working on the Xbox Series S. It's like a smaller, smarter version of the Xbox One S. 
Everything is really modular, and the addition of a solid state drive means there's one less component to remove, which saved quite a bit of time. Thanks a bunch for joining me, and thanks again to Andonstar for the fun new tool. If you enjoyed this video, you ought to hit that subscribe button down below. Only a handful of my viewers are actually subscribed, and I'd like to change that. Come see some of the weirder stuff I do over on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you in the next one.